All right. So our boy Shaky Bay. Shaky, not a single down vote yet. I'm so proud of you. All right. Look, I just figured I would start it off. Okay, look, you know what's going to happen. It's always going to have a down vote ratio. I'm just kidding, buddy. I'm just... <laughs> Um, our boy Shaky Bay has created a video that says BDO, what's happening to Black Desert Online? This is a basically like a he wants to go over kind of what happened to the Calfion ball and what's been kind of going on with the game lately. My My first impressions are are my my thoughts are that he is probably not going to be very happy with the state of the game currently because PvP that was probably one of the worst Calfion balls. I have ever seen for PVP. Period. Dot. So, uh, I'm curious what uh, what Shaky's gonna have to say about it here. World is happening to Black Desert Online. We will end one-sided guild wars. In the future, guild wars will only take place under the agreement of both guilds. All right, unpopular opinion. Well, popular opinion, but not among streamers. I still think the one-sided deck changes were a good thing overall for the game mainly because they started actually enforcing their harassment system. However, if they had just enforced their TOS in the first place, the one-sided deck changes would never have had to come through. But like, because they were constantly using it as an excuse, they needed the one-sided deck changes. Um, that being said, they should have added stuff to open world PVP to make it still feel organic so that those players still had something to do just so that, you know, just make sure that people aren't abusing it. Like that's, that's all. Right, but I still am in favor of the one-sided deck changes. I just think that they they should have just followed up and continued to uh, improve open world PvP. Okay, right on. I just you know I haven't seen it yet, so I'm just trying to give you my raw like thoughts on it. I oh found my! This ID in this wallet. Holy shit! Is that the forum post? Oh my God, bro. That's the most like interactive. Oh my goodness. And if that's the case, this must be. That's crazy. That makes sense to me. That's the most interacted with forum posts I have probably ever seen. Then Except for maybe choices. It's not my wallet. Isn't what open world PVP what makes the game? <laughs> why did you, why did you do it in like a fucking, why did you put this in like 140p? Exposed in 140p, boys. <laughs> he can't even copyright strike you because you can't even really tell that it's canon. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. Why would they take it away? It's actually not. Huh? Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Hold on, let me see. It. It's not my wallet. Isn't what open world PvP what makes the game? Why would they take it away? It's actually not. Huh? Okay, well, in fairness, he is... Okay, as stupid as you're trying to make Cannon look right now, he's not wrong. Most people in the game do not enjoy open-world PvP on a regular basis. Maybe sometimes, but, like, most of the time, no. Ooh, if, if you don't stop stream sniping me, I'm gonna report you. And if they don't ban you, I'm gonna quit. Again, I will say it one more time. Cannon reports people, they get banned. I've reported people in the past and they gifted them value packs. They were like, grief him harder. It's not enough. Aren't y'all glad? Not even joking. Actually happened. Well, golly gee willikers. Now, it was so bad. It made it so bad. <laughs> we can say that Shaky Bay declines guild decks, even though we're the ones declining. Don't worry, guys. He apologized to the players. Everything's okay. He's gonna stop being uh, stubborn. He's gonna start listening. Oh, by the way, guys. God damn, bro. Look, every time I see this this outfit, I'm like, yes, I want this. This looks good. This is great. But also, I hated the Jay apology. Like, Jay was like, I'm gonna change. It's fine. And then, like, he only ever listens to the Korean player base. That's the biggest problem. New costume and new class coming out. Everything's fixed. Dealing with Mr. J, okay? It's like dealing with a narcissist who says to his girlfriend, I'm, so I'm sorry, baby, I'm gonna change, I swear. And then you end up believing it.
Shaky, isn't that what that you did to your guild members? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Although Jay has said he's gonna change like 50 times. Jay is gonna every single ball, I swear to god, Jay comes up and the first thing, the free space for Calfion Bingo. The free space for Calfion Bingo literally just says apology. Welcome to another Black Desert Online video, the critically acclaimed MMO RPG, guys. Uh, by the way, guys, the desert isn't black in this game, I know. The game certainly isn't online anymore, with the Marnie Realms being 50% of your gameplay, PvP getting removed with the GVG deck changes, you know, people getting banned now for doing sandbox content. I'm talking to you, red players. Yeah, you guys, you know, the ones that are simply getting banned for playing the game. Yeah. Okay, no one is getting banned just because they're playing the game okay no one's got no one's getting banned for just doing pvp people that harass the pvp system though they're getting turbo i'm talking about you red players yeah i bet y'all are having a good time right now yes yeah, so, you know i was actually supposed to make this video a long time ago as you guys okay know. i'm be all right so he's talking and that's great but like what's going on on the screen i don't know this guy is confused He's he's trying to figure out. Is that I, I, I have thumbs? Oh my god! I can grab him. Like bro, I, how has Shaky not been grabbed at this point? This is crazy, dude. This matchup is this is crazy. All he's got to do is just Solar Flare and grab Shaky. It's really not that hard. No, but then I just have right here. doubt in my oh, mind. Oh my god, like, it's bad. Should I post oh it? Oh my god, it's Does bad. it matter? Will Mr. J listen? All right, yeah. If you're a one v one a warrior and winning, it's a W. Even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't realize he has thumbs. Because let's be real, right? Now look, I'm a Florida man, as some of you may know. Oh my the god, chances dropped... of shaky, you're old. You're old. Because let's be real, right? Now look, I'm a Florida man, as some of the shaky bay I knew when I was growing up would never have dropped a good fight on a warrior. Where is the chat PVP macro? Where is the teabagging? Where, what, where is this? Where is the monta? Like, what are you doing right now? Man. Shaky's gotten older. He's gotten more docile with age. He's chilling now. He says that's, that's a young man's game of you may know the chances of mr j just listening to our feedback it's zero it's it's about the chances of it snowing tomorrow in Correct. florida yeah but we cope and we hope oh my god For those of you who may not play bdo or just not been playing let me just give you a quick rundown of what's been happening to the game okay mm -hmm. so we have the gvg deck system you now need permission to there's the shaky i know right there there's my boy right there you hit him with the question mark that's it there he is all right okay i just making sure i was concerned for a moment there you go you just turbo him claire war they that's have unified my the karma system essentially nerfing red player playstyle. i would be offended if shaky killed me in the open world and didn't question mark me was even more top battle. tell me that isn't the most tilting thing in the entire world it developed in league of legends and it spiraled out of control off we had an incident with the streamer which i'll be getting into later on Ooh. which resulted in uh, people getting banned for stream sniping which has never happened before in this community which is going to be i think a topic we need to address that incident that is correct however because the one-sided deck changes came through that's why we've seen an enforcement of the tos actually led to random people in the game who are just simply red pvping to get oh, what's this does anyone know what buff that is I don't play Musa. I don't know what this is. There's, there's, there's two blue like arrow things. Yeah, man. Like people were getting stub arrow? banned. There's a stub arrow buff? Simply for going red. The situation has gotten two so bad. Two quiver shots. That oh, people okay, in the right, community, when they get I didn't realize it showed up as a buff. I thought you just had to know. Get out of their spot. They'd just say, I'm going to report you. And for a lot of people who PVP, this is destroying the idea of a sandbox. As a whole, though, uh, mm -hmm. we have Marnie Realm that also got added simultaneously with the GVG changes, which um, essentially took a lot of people out of the open world, and now we're putting people in 12 hours of instance a day. Now, we will talk about Marnie Realms later. PvP as a whole, though, it's just getting nuked. Not only do they... Probably true. If somebody was grinding 24 hours in a day, you would not see them for 12 of that of those hours.
Realistically speaking, people are using one Marnie Realm hour a day. We're doing the GVGs, right? Not only are people randomly getting bad now for going red, the duration of Node Wars is also going to be much less, it seems like, in the future. Now, we also have the problem of capped content, right? So with the other issues in the game where, like, G they're removing PvP, right? All we really have left in the meantime is to go grind. Well, everything is capped. Like, the main... The main entree of the game right the seven course meal of black desert online is capped so now a lot of players True. are less scratching their head why should i 100 percent cat pvp is basically the the center of pvp and video whether it's aos um or it's large scale pvp most of that is capped yeah grind what's the point it's just better piece capped pve's capped what am i doing here totally valid too and uh finally the last issue which i mean there's actually he's a lot actually but the eating? one i want to talk about is uh, the black shrine which is the new bossing that they've finally added to bdo it took them 10 years but then what killed the fun was that the hardest content in the game which was calamity six and seven uh just didn't give any rewards as me as a player that was playing black shrine true um i was like okay finally you kind of right got now. some semi-competitive content spitting. right well, a lot of the complaints is that it looks like if you place higher or lower on the rankings, it doesn't really affect your drop rate too much. It just feels like fluff. After all of the mess that Mr. J has created, you know, the BDO developer team has created with these changes, right? Like everyone was giving their feedback. The last thing finally was the How many Bozo takes can fit in one video? Okay, chill with the shit. Look, I know that Shaky has a lot of hate out there, but let's just try to look at the video objectively. That being said, He's not wrong when he says that Black Shrine for a really long time had just like dog shit rewards, right? That's a big reason why people stopped doing it, right? I think that we can all agree that Black Shrine should have had better rewards from the get-go. And like, I, I still think that the rewards are like, eh, they're still like meh. Alfion Ball. I, I'd say the best thing they've done with Black Shrine lately is this. This world buff thing, when somebody gets a Black Shrine, like, like completes a C7, I think that's really cool. I think that that is super sick, and I like that they did that with Black Shrine. I would like to see more of that in other aspects of the game. The Calfion Ball. They were advertising, spending mega money advertising this, right? I mean, yeah, I saw Google cool. ads every. Like, to have an impact on what the server is doing as a player is very cool. You know what I mean? Not like a crazy impact, but like, it's cool. You know? Like, they should introduce like a faction system too. Or like they have open world PvP events that spawn, um, and like you know, whatever, whoever's faction wins gets a drop rate buff for the whole server for that faction. You know, like that that kind of stuff would be cool. You could do it for life skilling events. You could do it for PVE events. You could do it for PvP events. You could do it for like world bosses, stuff like that, like or field bosses. It'd be cool. Like it, just extra stuff they could add to the game. Relatively low effort stuff. Everywhere, like everywhere, for the for the makes Calfion you feel more ball. connected. For a lot of us that play the game. We were really hoping that they would kind of touch base on some of the tomfoolery, I would say, they added to BDO. Shaky, it's Calamity 3. Wait. Exactly A. Consistency. I respect it. And what happened? The same old, same old Calfion ball that we normally expected. Random codes, random hammers, and a whole lot of nothing. That's really what it was. Was yeah, but the random hammers this time were super sick, though. What it will, really would it boil down to, man? Oh, and what I mean by a whole lot of nothing. I just forty-six seconded it. If you saw me, oh, okay, I get it now. Okay. Come on, go, go, go. Oh, go. what attempt was it? I swear to God, I. Okay. This is attempt two. You're on your second attempt. Come on. You go, 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 go. This is it. All right, that's fine. All right, I was concerned sure for him. I was gonna report you, but then yeah, yeah you're fine now. Nothing. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Right, yeah, nope. You still can't get it yet. Again, you're still in report territory, Shaky. You're not allowed to hit this horse until you hit 22 to 25 attempts. Don't you already have 10 black stars? It's not that kind of problems. Let's get one. You got two tries. <laughs> this game is so fucking dumb, bro. 
It's not like zero, straight up. Please come back so you can fail five times. Yeah, here I am making this video. Talk about what should happen. And I'm not the only one, I've, you know, talking about this. I've seen many other creators talking against this. But there's also a lot of silence from other creators that don't want to say anything. And I literally don't blame them because we all know I'm they're not going to listen. But, you know, hey, man, I want to get the discussion going. It needs to happen. Yeah, I mean, I do have it on good authority that they do listen to the... Um um the united nations podcast whether they actually are going to do anything we don't know but they are hearing it from what i hear to be honest like look that's what the, the just kind of that's what the, um no, i won't reveal my story fucking up right now so it's needs to, there's a lot that needs to be addressed now for the slim chance slim chance pa is listening and guys if you guys are this far in the video comment leave feedback like the video share this with your friend like get people talking about this like seriously because this is pretty bad for the game but the way it's heading like we need to like give our feedback and they need to listen also like pa needs to stop being stubborn i just want to get this out of the way really quick okay and there's a lot of hearsay they say we say they say they listen to KR more. They don't listen to NA. What Koreans say, well, our server's a test server. They don't listen to us either. And then it goes to the live servers. A lot of here, listen, at the end of the day, okay? PA, you need to- Yeah, no, it's the Spider-Man meme where we're just pointing at each other. No, they're listening to you. And then the Koreans are pointing at us. No, they're listening to you. And then we both talk to each other and they're like, wait, who are they listening to then? And the answer is no one buy into the na eu western philosophy of the game listen to your western player base it's your best chance because what does console say they only listen to human beings and they do not consider console um in that species so they're not going to listen to anything that console says or does ever for any reason sadly they are your biggest we've seen the numbers on the financial report feels bad bro console just gets absolutely dicked on everything it's okay it's very obvious that pa is panicking right they're panicking and they don't know what to do like they're, just, they're losing money like crazy right now okay throughout all the years just a tip nothing just say uh nothing you say or do nothing any of us say or do will change anything only way it changes is if we stop swiping and playing as we feed them 60% of their funding. Okay, Brownie, it's important that you understand that people have got to work to try to change this. It's important that people believe that you can change the behavior that Pearl Abyss has lately, right? Because if you give up on that, if you just say they're just never going to listen to us, well, well, then you're just going to give up on the game. You know, you've given up on the community, you've given up on the game. Like, it's important that people like Shaky or people like me or people like Bro Bear or people like um like the korean uh content creators um all continue to try to push to scream at them you need to listen to us the forum posts the videos everything because eventually they will be forced to right overwhelming feed like back like that it works okay that's the reason that we didn't get the changes on the global labs because like they do hear people, they just choose not to listen most of the time. But if it's an overwhelming echo chamber of negativity, it does get through. NAEU are the people that are supporting their game the most, okay? And they also have some of the bigger content creators that are also helping support them. Yeah, it won't work uh, unless we speak with our wallets. That I would generally agree with. I haven't actually bought anything since uh, the Black Friday sales, and I don't plan on buying any any more pearls uh, until I feel that they are comfortably listening to our player base. What did he just say about the streamers? Hold on. And they also have some of the bigger content creators that are also helping support their game. Really start listening to your Western feedback. I know that the other servers and regions, they have their own wishes, but I think actually i don't think i know that if you guys just buy into what the westerners say your game is going to see success worldwide it'll take some real talk it might be a korean mmo but the west is like the majority of your player base real fucking shit we are the we the majority of your player base is the westerners and keep in mind when i say the west i mean like basically everyone outside of korea um like basically NAEU etc right like it's 
Like the, these are like the majority of your players and the majority of your income is all the West. So listening to those players is very important. It might be a Korean game, but you should not just be listening to the Koreans. Is Australia the West? Everything is the West, depending on where you start on the globe. Okay, just spin the globe in a circle. That's, what, that's how people... You think I'm memeing right now, but that's how they Next refer to it. Event. So in Korea, this developed in StarCraft 2. The idea of the West uh, or Westerners playing the game, it was like the Koreans were the best at StarCraft 2 and anyone that wasn't from Korea was considered a Westerner, a foreigner, right? Like, so you could say Westerner or foreigners. I'd like to say Westerners because it's a little less uh, derogatory. Um, but like, yeah, Westerners basically control the space of BDO. And I find it funny that they will listen to their Korean content creators, like, like the big Korean content creators, they'll listen to them, right? Like if the Korean content creator says something or does something or shows a bug or whatever, they'll listen to them. But they won't listen to any of the NA EU content creators, of which they are much bigger, right? By Septimus Prime is bigger than any Korean streamer, hands down. So is Choice. So is Frosty. So am I. So are the other, like, like there are plenty of examples of Western content creators that have much bigger audiences that they don't listen to at all for like any reason, but they'll listen to their Korean like content creators all the time, which is telling in like their perception of whose opinion they feel is important. And that to me is the most offensive thing. I'm right. But look, like when the Koreans post on Inven, they actually get responses from the developers. When we post on our forums, do you know what we get? The CM team just goes, heard ya. And then we never hear anything about it ever again. It doesn't matter. It's so annoying. So annoying. It's never too late to fix the game. It's never too late. I mean, look, we had a massive flood of players that randomly happened this year even. They're all gone now for the most part. But hey, look, let's look on the bright side, okay? You have the best combat on the market for, for, for an MMORPG, okay? All the I bet the NAPA also gets Herja. I can't speak too much on that, but... Yeah. That's what they're getting. I do not feel that the problem is that our CMGM team is not relaying the information. I do not, I do not feel that that is what the problem is. I feel the problem, and part of the reason I feel this way is because when we had the best in class tournament, everyone um, in the PvP community at least knows, and if you were around back then, you, you understand, the best in class tournament was a really big deal. And the winners of the best in class tournament were allowed to speak with, with the developer of their class, right? Because um, the way their development team works, I asked them at the Calfion Bowl. The, the way their development team works is they have one developer for every single class in the game. And whatever that person says, that's what happens. Okay? That's how it works. So that developer got in call with the winners of the best in class tournament to receive feedback on their class and what they really felt like needed to be changed. Wutaru said it was the same thing. He said he came in with like a huge list and was like talking through point by point and trying to explain it. And the guy just was like, heard ya and then zero changes happening happened danny destroyer said the same thing he got into call he, he had all this constructive feedback nothing happened armin said like like, like it, it, it armin confirmed it on the uh like reezy did the same thing for kuno nothing happened like armin confirmed it on the on the united nations podcast last week like they just don't listen to anything the west has to say for any reason it's really frustrating really annoying what needs to happen now is that you guys just start fixing what the players are actually complaining about and i'm gonna get to that next okay and what i believe is the single most biggest crutch holding back black desert okay and trust me it's gonna be what a lot of people have been begging for this game to have that you guys just aren't delivering on okay? my next point okay. is this okay stop half-assing and i'm being just bl blunt here stop half-assing your content what do i mean by that listen it's very obvious you guys half-ass your content i'll give you an example right we've asked for dungeons for years okay we love the dungeons in the game that are in there they're actually pretty fun okay yeah. mm -hmm. problem I just is did it. no rewards you threw us with like the dungeon i think the rewards are pretty good for the dungeon we have 
I think the dungeon that we have is really good. I actually think that this was the worst example you could have used. I generally agree that like they do low effort content all the time, but I don't think the dungeon qualifies as low effort content. I think that the rewards for the dungeon are pretty solid. I think the way they designed it was really good and I think they should do, do more of it. That's great. I think a good example of low effort content was the fucking artifacts. Kabua artifacts are super low effort content. Ulakita in general is low effort content. Um, having to grind 100 embers for a flame to upgrade your gear and it's the same thing every single time that we have it is low effort content. The dead god weapons, I guarantee you, will also just be a flame that you have to grind 100 embers and then you just upgrade your, your pen black star. Again, that's really low effort content. High effort content would be something like an art, like the artifact system when it first came out. Really, really high effort content. Like the every single grind zone in the game dropped a different artifact, all the different light stone sets. You could customize your builds. That was really good. We have not seen that since the artifacts have come out. It's been let's let's polarize our content. Let's like let's 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 pigeon toe our content to basically everybody has to do the same build no matter what. Right? Kabua artifacts are the best artifacts in the game. It doesn't matter anymore. All that old stuff, just it just doesn't matter anymore. It's really annoying. Not enough to do for me. Uh, I think they should add more cosmetic rewards to the game and would help casuals eat it up. That's what I was saying earlier. I was preaching about this earlier. Um, did I not say? I said the biggest thing that they could do to help their game out is to just add more cosmetic outfits for gathering, hunting, cooking, all the different life skills that are like really rare. They could add more cosmetic effects that are like Easter eggs for different grind zones in the game, like the La Rezeca set. They could add emotes to the game that, um, or like, like character animations to the game that like are custom that like you have to work for and go grind out. Right. And then your character like takes, I, I don't know, like your character could do various things like hold a chicken or something. I, I, I have no idea. Um, some crazy stuff. Destiny two does emotes like this all the time. Um, like there's a ton of just cosmetic stuff they could add to the game, not Pearl shop stuff, like cosmetic stuff that like you can just go grind for and like do stuff for it doesn't have to progress your gear. We just, we're playing an MMO. We don't care about the gear. What we care about is like having a bigger e-penis than the person standing next to you, right? Like, and if I look at this person in time, I'm like, holy shit, what is that outfit? Because it's not a Pearl Shop outfit. That like, it's not the Orzeka said, what is that? Like, oh, dude, that guy's wearing, you know, that guy's wearing that outfit. Like, oh, that's super sick, right? Like, that's what you want to do. Like, that's a big part of MMOs and it's missing in BDO. What's up, Quancy? Since we have now, Transmogs would be tight. True. There you go. Never been touched again. Have fun with your one hour. Actually, less than. The problem with transmog is that most of the armor sets that they have in the game look like garbage. So, like, transmog isn't going to look very good. An hour of dungeons a week. And we're never going to update them or touch them. We're just going to leave them as is. Oh, and we're just going to leave you with four dungeons in 10 years. Like, don't just dip your toes into the water. I can't believe they didn't give us the final dungeon at the Calpheon Ball this year. It's been like two years since the last dungeon. Like they've been teasing us with it forever. I cannot believe they didn't give it to us. This and then when it fails, uh, you just let it go. No, like dungeons are very much a core part of MMORPGs. And just because you guys didn't see a massive success in it, doesn't mean to not add dungeons in the game. Oh no. It means- No, I think it was a massive success. I think the fact that people are still doing the dungeon is a great success. Most of the time when content is a failure in BDO, people do it when it comes out and then you never see them do it again. A perfect example is trading. The new trading system came out. People did it when it came out. It was garbage. Everyone stopped doing it. Uh, another good example is um, Grand Prix. The Grand Prix, really well-designed system, underdeveloped uh, rewards. Everybody did it when it came out. It was like all the rage. And then everybody realized the rewards suck. And then no one did it again until very recently they buffed the rewards up. But like, yeah. Is that you need to keep adding more. Yeah, Grand Prix is huge now. Yeah, because they just added a few more rewards. They tweaked like the, the mechanics in the game. They made it a little bit more competitive. You know what I mean? And like that now it's, it's good content now. Dungeons for the game and refine the rewards. More dungeons, more raids. That's what needs to really happen. PVE raids. So that's really the main. Large issue. scale PVE, PVE raids, more dungeons, bro. I would go hard. Issue, right? People can't really you know do enough dungeons a week or a day right now a lot of misses feels shaky. like it's just there and no one really does it so stop half-assing your content your second example of half-assing content 
is uh, very simple. Ever since they added a Valencia into the game, you can just see through the node system. It's just less and less nodes, like less and less nodes to enter, like you know, interact with, and that's a whole other topic. But uh, to go even further, uh, instead of adding expansions, not only did the expansions get smaller by area and size. Um, we can take a look at how they've added PvE content to the game, right? So at first it was a whole expansion of a new area, then we got to Elvia, and now we've gotten so lazy that we're adding Dekia Lantern. Let's just change what- Okay, well I wouldn't call that an expansion. I wouldn't call Elvia an expansion, per se. And I think Land of the Morning Light was actually comparatively in size. I think it's pretty big. Um, and like, I think that like- like overall, I think their end game PVE, they've made like bounds in the last year. They've definitely branched out for their end game PVE content. I, I'm much happier. I, I think they need to keep pushing in that direction. Keep pushing for that end game PVE content. Um, I think boss blitz was good. I think, mm, I think they took a step back with Ulakita for sure. They said that they were going to make it like a basic bitch grind zone, but like also they didn't have to make all like three or four grind zones, just like super basic and no one fucking cares. You know what I mean? Like, uh, the whole region just feels kind of plain. One mob. New content, guys. Hey, man, go solo grind. This has to stop, okay? Listen, maybe it's been like they've been developing this. I will say that their, their main story for Ulakita, huge thumbs up. I did like the main story. Game for years, and they're much getting better. the burnout. But I fully believe if they can just address what the players are actually complaining about, this game is going to do much better, okay? 100%. So look, just to be blunt, PA, this is what the players want, okay? Okay, what, what do we want? What the players want, all right, is content. And the content that we want is the content that makes us feel like we're playing an MMORPG. And I'm going to label you everything in here in a minute. Now look, I'm just going to be very blunt, PA. What the community wants is we want content. That's all the community wants, okay? Case. The game literally... Did I listen to it again? <laughs> feels empty. PA, please. Stop adding new classes. Stop adjusting class balance. No, no, no. Classes and class balance are fine. Classes and class... I think keep adding classes. Keep adding... Like, keep balancing your classes. You need to understand how development works. Like, they have, they have multiple different people working on the game. You have, like, the class balance team, right? class development team, right? And then you have like the expansion team, right? So like they can keep working on expansions while working on these other things. Cause like these, these people are tasked to do different things. Like I don't, I don't mind them keep it. Plus more classes in the game means there's more of a chance that a new player is going to pick it up and really relate to their class. The thing that makes a player like stick with BDO the most is champion select it's your it's literally just your the choice on your class the reason league of legends has so many champions there's a champion for everyone like there's a champion that everyone can relate to and absolutely love and in bdo we continue pushing yeah we continue pushing for more classes because then there will be more classes that people can relate to there's still we still in this community we have chronic real rollers that just they can't find that that class that they just love you know what i mean they're just re-rolling all the time they quit the game really frequently but like if they had that class that they really could attach to you know what i mean like th then it would be okay so like i i think that the way they continue to get new players is to continue in introducing classes i don't think there's any end to the amount of classes they can add to the game stop you say this but there was an uh what's the art team doing um they haven't added new outfits in years art devs left pa and gone to other teams because they will not let the artists cook. Yeah, I would agree that uh, as far as, well, you, you can't say the art team. You need to say like the, the outfit development team. The art team is actually doing a super gamer job. Do you guys remember like the Land of the Morning Light cutscenes and the Ulakita cutscenes with like the drawn, like super cool, like Korean art styles and stuff? I think the art team is actually doing work in that in that department. Like, so you can't say the art team. But like the outfit team, I would agree. The outfit team came up with this is they, the outfit team said that they were going to they were like, we're working on a banger. Our our next outfit is going to be so good. We are changing. Right. And then we got this. Give me a fucking break, dude.
She's literally wrapped in gift wrap. She might, she may or may not be wearing fucking underwear. Like, get the fuck out of here, bro. Doing quality of life fixes and stop, please, for the love of God. Oh, and please stop making the changes of, oh, sorry, we fixed the, um, uh, the changes on Juan for their art peers. And we noticed that the, the panty bra set was clipping through the player's outfit and that has now been fixed. Focus all of your attention on filling the game up with content. That's what we need, Bro! okay? The stuff that I just mentioned, I think it's in their Bro! best interest to put so a halt on these things. Oh and we start God! fixing what we have. He's There's cooking! A He's cooking! We literally went through an update in this most recent patch. The game is on fire. PvP is in fucking shambles, right? PvP is in absolute shambles. And do you know what we got? Do you know the most important update that we got in this most recent patch? A fucking fairy skin. A lewd fucking fairy skin. That's what we got that everyone has to buy, not because we all want to jack off to our fairy. That is one of the reasons. The other reason is because it gives you death penalty, and that's the more important one, right? But, like, that's, like, the issues that they're concerned... To, like, that's the reason that they're concerned, right? Like, they're, they're concerned with, like, oh, we can make the fairy look more lewd. Like, get the fuck out of here. You bought it, though? No, I have not bought it. I don't, I don't ever look at my fairy. I'll, I'll prove it. I, I do not have it. Um... You can see, I don't, she looks, she does not have the, I, I did not buy it. I don't care about it. I'm being honest. But like, even still, that was the most meaningful update we got, unless you were a scholar main. It's ridiculous. A lot of content in the game for PA to work off of, like different mobs, different areas. It's in the game. It's just- Too small to care. I don't know about you guys. I immediately muted my fairy. Baby, it's better when you don't fucking talk. Um, and I hit her. I don't even want to see her. It's like she's not even there. We need a lot of reworking and adjusting done Id, to make this a better game. Now, this next segment is the most important I knew somebody was going to say hit. No, no, like, Id, the most important part. For those of you that don't play BDO and that may play MMOs, the stuff that I'm going to list is going to be pretty baffling. But here we go. We PvP players, 10% of the population? Okay, then let me expand your, your P brain thinking. Okay, because it didn't just like the global lab changes did not just affect PVP players. It was also an effect on PVE players, right? When you add super armors, when you add protections to the entire game, to the whole fucking game, to every class in the game, it affects all aspects of the fucking game. Maybe not life skilling as much, but PVE for sure is affected. Those players care about that stuff, right? Like you've had this game for 10 years, Black does it online. The critically acclaimed uh nah blue i swear to god you turn on your fairy voice i swear she talks to you you die and she says oh my god can you like do better oh my god your dog shit i muted her so quick that's because she dies so frequently dog shit may what main mmorpg i really say mmorpg here okay listen it's been 10 years how is it that only one hour of dungeon content per week is acceptable that's fair how is it? It's a fair point. That some of the hardest content in the game is the least rewarding in BDO. How is it that we don't have any guild raids? How is it that we don't have any guild PvE content? I agree. How is it that we don't have any group? We are getting guild group like boss blitz PvE. We are getting boss blitz PvE. Um, and I think that's going to be super cool. I would like more of that. I would have liked the the Thornwood uh, Castle or whatever the um, what was the name of that castle um, that they were gonna come out it was gonna be PVEVP, um, kind of like uh, Gambit. Uh, like man, that stuff that stuff was gonna be super cool too, and then they chose to cancel it. Instead, we got War of the Roses, cancel that, and just give us a faction system instead. PVE content. Go ahead and take a look at Garmoth. It tells us all the grind spots per hour, right? Why didn't he give you the creator role? What did you do to Garmoth, dude? I've never talked to Garmoth in my life, and I logged into Garmoth, and 
he did this for me. Yeah, I have creator. He just gave it to me. I didn't even, I didn't ask her. He just, I, I just, he just gave it. <laughs> well, he fucking hates you, dude. <laughs> look at this, guys. I'm going to tell you how many are group spots, right? So look, solo spot, solo spot, solo Grand spot, risk. group <laughs> spot, solo, 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 solo spot, solo, another solo spot, solo, solo, a duo spot. Oh my god, and it's not even competitive with the top spots. Okay. Solo, 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 solo. Let's keep going. Solo. Okay, makes a good point. Uh, solo with, and then you kind of group up to kill a boss. That's, that's a group. Yeah, it's a group. Awesome. Also, Alter Imps is group. That's two. It's two men. Look how low it is. Uh, solo. 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 He passed her. No, he pointed out to us. Point. He missed okay. Alter Imps, though. So, the, the idea I'm getting at here, right, is that there's no variety to the, to the PvE. It's pretty much only, only solo grind and then go hit a circle. That's it. So With a combat system this good, the fact that the only PvE content, or like, until recently, the only PvE content we had to do was grind mobs was astounding to me. General PA, where are my raids, dungeons, boss towers, are an overall events that happen randomly, active boss, and Arena rest, blood or whatever is an I improvement. I really feel like a lot of the BDO community will agree with this one. BDO necessarily doesn't have to do anything new. Straight up. I simply believe if these developers... Shaky, how do you find these guilds? How the f*** do you find these people? I have never even heard of 86. And here you have three of them on your screen in a GVG. Developers just played other MMORPGs for a little while and just copied some of the mechanics, right? we'd have a much, much more enjoyable MMORPG experience. To top that off, uh, why hasn't PvP become a viable source of money-making yet in 10 years? It's not just PvP. I hate it when people laser focus on PvP for this. It's everything. Life-skilling, bartering, PvP, all of it. The only viable way to make money is PvE grinding has gotten so out of control that nothing else even like catches, nothing else is even close. Yes, PvP is a good example, but like the problem is when you say PvP shaky, words matter very greatly. When you say PvP, people are going to be like, well, I don't care about PvP or PvP is a small part of the population. No, 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 no. Everyone, unless you're doing PvE, you're literally not making enough money right? You're making like at least a billion less silver per hour. At least a less billion. Like, and that's on like hunting with 2k mastery in a sniper zone is getting you like one bill an hour, maybe 1.2 if I'm being generous, right? You're not even like, like touching the amount, like a seasonal player with the drop rate event is like climbing up your ass in silver per hour. And it took you 400 billion to get there. Like, it's crazy. As an MMR... It's not just PvP, but it, PvP is a good example. I just don't like using it because so many people just write it off. ...with the best combat content, let alone actual competitive PvE content. It's just such a horrible take, right? Like, if PvP is so rewarding, then nobody would PvE. This is dumb, right? That's it's not very true. simple. People, people who would always like PvE. PvP uh -huh. are going to PvP. Yep. People who like PvE are going to PvE, respectively. No, 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 no. You said it wrong. People that like, like PVE are going to PVE. Okay. People that like PVP are going to PVE and PVP. People that like life skilling are going to log out. Okay. Like there's that, that's just how it is. Right? You can't do just PvP because you, in order to do PvP, you have to do PvE because you have to make money. Right? I'm tired of PvEing. I want to go PvP and progress. I'm tired of PvPing. I want to go PvE and progress. And like, as a sandbox MMO, it should feel like you can make money doing whatever you want. That's the point of a sandbox MMO. Right? The feeling that I can do anything and make money or make silver and progress. That's the whole point. But like right now, it only feels like I can grind. I feel forced to go grind because otherwise I'm just griefing super hard. And I am someone, I play the game for fun. 
I do. I play the game basically just for fun, but like, I feel like bartering is just griefing. Bartering is so bad. It's like 300 to 400 million an hour tops. And I have a full plus 10 blue gear, Etheria, um, uh, advance with perfect sailors and like, and like mastery, everything top of the line, Margoria secret. So all of it, and I'm making three to 400 mil an hour bartering. It's a joke. It's a joke. Not that I should be necessarily be competitive. Like, like bartering silver per hour is kind of a joke because like you can only barter for like four hours a day and then you're done, right? You can't even do it anymore after that. Um, but like bartering is just one example. You could also say cooking, right? And yeah, sure, they should make less silver per hour than grinding because grinding takes more effort. But like, it shouldn't be that much less, right? Like they still have to go out and get the materials. They still have to spend money and they still have to set it all up. There's, there's, there's a lot that goes into it, right? It needs to be making more money than it is. Stop punishing your players for the respective play style and wishes. As they say, variety is the spice of life. Buff hunting, man, dude, hunting is literally outside of grinding. Hunting is the next, in terms of silver per hour in the game. Okay, we're going to rate silver per hour in the game based on the value of your time. Number one, obviously PvE. You're going to make the most silver per hour in PvE. Number two is hunting. Okay, so asking to buff hunting is a slap in the face to all of the other, uh, everything else. Right? Like, like, it's literally like these two things. Hunting still needs to be buffed. That's the thing. Like, hunting, I, I would agree with you, but like, that's how bad it is. The rest of the stuff is so bad. It's, it's hurtful. And that's what BDO lacks. Just literally lacks variety. Mm -hmm. um, also, a uh, being against it has variety. They just refuse to let us have any extra silver. Instances is just not an excuse. To Regular not hunting add is down content. bad. That's like that was like their biggest excuse fair. for a very long Still time. Still better than the other Not skills. to add dungeons. Well, you know now we have competition on the way and it's kind of wishful thinking to just be like these other mmos will just die like the other ones i mean there's a good chance some of these mmos might have a decent shot we don't know right but ashes of creation looks promising but let's be honest it's coming out in like three years um and its combat looks like ass right now if its combat continues as, as it is no one's gonna care thrown in liberty though that's pretty, so, yeah, it's kind of cooking. Throne and Liberty's combat, although it doesn't touch what BDO does necessarily. I don't know, man. It's other systems are pretty good. Um, and the fact that it helps you play together with your guild and stuff and gets you to be a community, sketchy. Ash's combat is so shit, I agree. We've seen these other games now have open world dungeons and it's just like, why Shaky, can't BDO I know I'm on the cook that, too, man. Right? That's really the question. Why can't they, right? Pearl of Abyss, like, the, like, they need to understand that these caps are... It's really counterintuitive to why a lot of people play MMOs. Like, okay, look. For PvP, right? We're talking PvP here. I really believe there should only be, like, a T1 cap. And the rest of the game should just be uncapped. Throne won't pop off. Its market isn't as popular. I don't know. I think that there will be a big swell of players at the start. And then I think it will decline, um, obviously, over time. And then I think it'll have its own dedicated following. I think that it's good enough that it will have a dedicated player base. I think the biggest problem is its combat just does not measure up to Black Deserts. And so all BDO really has to do is introduce some more guild stuff um, and content that we can do with each other. And people are just going to go right back to BDO or choose BDO over Throne and Liberty regardless. So I do think that it'll have a smaller population. I think it's going to pop off when it comes out. I think the, it'll pop off in the West. Most of the people that are playing it now, even though it's only released in Korea, are Westerners. I'll just be real. Some of you may disagree, but I'll look at it like this, right? I'm going to play it. When everything in the game is capped, what is the what is the point in grinding? There isn't, really. There really isn't. And now let's go to PvE. Even PvE is capped. You're punishing your players for progressing in a way. So, like, once you hit a certain extent of gear... There's really no point in gearing up. And that's the entire game right now. That's how I feel. Like, I'm at, like, 725 gear score, and I just, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just going to make life skilling gear for the next six months. Like, why the fuck do I need to push my gear anymore? Oh, everything's capped. Why should I grind? Why should I push gear? For what? There's no competitive PvE content, and mm -hmm. the spirit of PvP is dying in the open world. No competitive PvE? Actually, there's boss blitz. Get the fuck out of here. He's right. And well, aside from boss blitz, yeah.
Jaguars are getting And that gutted. doesn't require gear, so it's like whatever. What's the point in gearing up? Yeah, right? it's like 5%. And that's really what happens when you don't have MMO content in the game. The game is just quite literally lacking the basics and the bread and butters of what MMOs offer. It's BDO just lacks it entirely. And that's where BDO is missing the mark right now. PA needs to understand this. And because this is what they're not addressing for like the last 10 years. They keep doing these quality of life changes, random, you know, class balance. We don't want that anymore. Fix well, the content. You well, we do want that. We want the quality of life changes. The quality of life changes are important to the progression of the game to help new players get into the game. For example, if you look over at our primary competitor is Lost Ark, um, or at least I would say that's our primary competitor. The problem with Lost Ark is that new players just can't get into Lost Ark. The entire community just disowns them. You can't get into raid groups. It's very difficult to gear up on time. Like you're just behind the curve. Like you just, like nobody wants you unless you have like the end game gear. It just doesn't fucking matter. But in, um, P but in Black Desert, we have a much more evolved like new player system. We get our players into it and like quality of life changes are fundamentally important to allowing new players to pick up and play the game and like understand what's going on. It's very important to continue doing quality of life changes, but quality of life changes are only part of the development team. We want to see I, what Shaky is trying to say is that we want to see new content that is meaningful, that helps progress the game in a positive way so that we can play together in, a, in the sandbox MMO that we know and love. The quality of life content, though, is very important. Adding the Magnus, for example, was a big step in the right direction. Unifying life skills is a big step in the right direction. Simplifying all the enhancement materials, big step in the right direction, right? That helps new players get into it. It helps veteran players. It's just a win-win, right? It's just a W. You don't want to make your game so complex that new players can't get into it or the game eventually dies. It is what it is. So the quality of life changes are important, but I would agree that, like, the new content has been... Ulakita was just not it. They said that it was going to be kind of a half-assed expansion, but like, man, feels kind of bad. You have a beautiful foundation for the game. The, the world is... TL will be bigger than video because of crossplay? I don't know about that. Already big. You have a lot of grind spots. The problem is now is we need to start filling the content up with some actual tangible and rewarding content that's worth our while. They already have everything. They got the combat. They got the graphics. They got it all. We just need the MMO now. That's all we need. If if this message can seriously get across to PA, and maybe a lot of the community can also parrot this, that the game just needs to become a proper MMO, this game would be... I think that what he means by proper MMO, because he's, he's rambled a little bit here. Um, I think what he means by a proper MMO is he wants people to be able to play together. He wants the group content. Like, we have enough solo content. I understand that there are a lot of people in the community that only want to play the game solo, and that's how they want to play the game, and that's amazing. But here's the thing. Those people already have enough content, all right? We, like, the, the content we need are the people that want to play the game in a group with other players. That content is important, and we don't have enough of it. Much more enjoyable. They need to make sure that the rewards are good. Here's the thing with this situation. It's like this, right? The guy was getting griefed for hours by this one guild, and he got so fed up to the point where he was like, listen, man, if these people don't get banned, he's just going to quit. And this is not the only time this has happened. This is a completely natural reaction. This has happened to many streamers in the community. Now, if you're a BDO veteran, you're used to it. However, I want... I was about to say, yeah, dude, I just get griefed all the time. It is what it is. Everyone, to be honest right now, how many streamers have y'all seen actually leave this game just because of that? Lots. A lot. A lot. Like, Cutie Pie got griefed, Sneaky got griefed, uh, Lakar used to get griefed all the time. Like, I, like, I've been griefed, but like, I and I have left the category before because like, I, I was getting griefed by Goon and I was like, I just don't want to do this anymore. I just left. I just went and played Elden Ring. Like, it, it, like, at a certain point, and Cannon, like, Clint Cannon was going to leave too, but, like, and he did end up leaving anyway. Uh, you say Shroud, Tim the Tap Man, Summit. Yeah, Summit was was a good example. Summit used to get griefed all the time. Um, and he actually gave it an honest shot. I think Tim and Shroud and Soda, they they weren't going to stay. I don't, Summit was never going to stay either. Let's, you're kidding yourself if you think he was going to stay. Um, but, like, a lot of the big creators aren't going to stay. That's what you need to understand. But, like... 
there are a lot of creators that have left the community sooner than they should have. They're going to leave. How quickly they leave is kind of up to us. Joe never fails. Joe didn't leave because he was griefed. Um, so it was actually uh, liking the game, and I remember watching him get griefed and then just shutting the stream off. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's my point, is that, like, they'll like the, the game. They might play for a little while. They're inevitably going to leave eventually. But, like, I'm a cutie pie is a good example. I'm a cutie pie almost quit the game immediately. When he, start, he started playing, and he was getting power leveled, and Snake showed up to the grind zone and griefed the shit out of him. I remember watching it and getting so mad watching Snake literally grief because he had all of his all of his EXP buffs and stuff running and he kept killing the person that was like power leveling him and he felt helpless. He didn't have another character he could swap to. He couldn't do anything. And Snake basically said, we are not leaving. We're going to grief your entire like power leveling process in your process in the game unless you join Snake. You need to join Snake. And so he had, so he joined Snake. Yeah, he joined Snake only because he had to. That kind of griefing is so detrimental to the game because he almost just turned the game off. He was like, all right, well, fuck it. You know what I mean? I'll just go play something else. And he can, right? So like there have definitely been streamers in the past that get hard griefed by our community, especially our PvP community. And like nothing was done about it. And they left the, the category before they should have. And we lost a lot of potential players because when a content creator leaves the category, so does his audience. Okay. If Asmongold played 10 hours of BDO, you think that hundreds more players would not immediately just start playing BDO. Most of them are going to leave with him when he leaves, but some of them will stay, right? That's how it works. That's how content creation works. Um, so like, yeah, it's just really frustrating to see that happen in our community. I think we can all agree it should have never been allowed to the point where you can actually harass someone. That's, um, then PA is forced to change the system and PvP players don't understand why. Oh no, that Noggin, they understand. Every PvPer in the community knows why the one-sided deck changes came through. It's because Goon really hard abused it, right? And they're not the only ones that have abused it over the years, but they're the most recent ones and they drove it all the way home. They drove it all the way home. And so the PvP, the, the one-sided deck changes came through and that was the end of it. While they're streaming and follow them channel to channel and just keep killing. But ironically, the most influential guild in Black Desert Online history is Goon. That's why we have the one-sided deck changes. At least in North America. Them. And then for the last 10 years, it's been, uh, well, sorry, too bad, just swap channels. That was just really stupid. This is how it's been for years for years then randomly out of the blue they decided to start banning people that were stream sniping. it was not out of the blue so the way it worked in the past shaky is that people would report i know because i used to report uh, I, I reported one group of people that hunted me for three straight months every time i streamed no matter what no matter what i did everything i could to hide it bell blur all of it they would just run me down um so i reported this group and in the past the reason that these people were let off the hook when i reported them the cmgm team sent them a warning in the mail and then they put in a support ticket themselves it took me months to gather the evidence for this support ticket months because you need clips of multiple days of evidence you needed a cmgm in your chat that saw it live you needed everything you needed a million pieces of evidence to even submit the report okay then i submit the report after months of being harassed I submit the report. These players got a warning in the mail. No ban, none of that shit. They got a warning in their mail. They put a support ticket in that day. Two hours later, the CMGM team apologized and said, that's our mistake. It was a one-sided declaration of war. That is part of the game. Here is a seven-day value pack. Keep griefing him. I'm not fucking joking. And then the entire fucking community came out and just fucking griefed me into the ground. Okay, so what these players were doing was they're taking the one-sided deck changes and they're saying it's part of the game. <laughs> and they're using it as an excuse or they were using it as an excuse to grief players because it's part of the game, right? Um, once the one-sided deck changes were gone, they still tried to do this, right? Without the one-sided deck, they would just flag on people. Well, now it's not technically part of the game anymore through Pearl Abyss's eyes, right? 
Um, and so when Cannon reported him, it was the first time that we had seen someone report for this. Brobear waited a long time. He put in a report as well. And both Cannon and Brobear got a response. People started getting banned for the first time. That's because the one-sided deck changes came through. I agree. Which has never happened. Bro, your videos are gold. That's why they brought me here. Yo, Magpie Stroker. Thanks so much, man. I really appreciate that. Also, interesting name. <laughs> before. And this is not... Excuse me? Why was your guild deckable again? There's a million reasons why a guild might be deckable uh, in the old in the old deck system. Like you can, you can absolutely deck... And putting people on protection did not really help. They didn't give a shit. Even if you were on protection, they did not care. Like the see it like the pearl abyss was not going to help you. Like it, life skilling guilds got decked all the time. Guilds that never PVP'd anything. Not Cannon's fault, and it, it's making people Same believe YouTube that Cannon hitting. has Let's like go. a secret pocket GM in his pocket, people to get banned because this seemed like fav favoritism, right? And this is not the only. Yeah, like I would get decked by one HP or I think that it was one HP. That's Dashy's guild. His name is ATL. Notoriously one of the most toxic members of the entire BDO community. Um, he would get, you would get the one-sided deck. You would see it flash up and you're like, okay, I'm about to get fucking griefed. Or pure luck. Yeah, it was pure luck. Yeah. And you would be like, okay, here he comes. And then he would just run you the fuck down for like the next, uh, however long he wanted to. And there was nothing you could do about it. Time where I have personally seen a content creator situation get mishandled. It's really not. Okay, but how is a siege guild able to deck a? I, I assume you meant weaker guild. Please, ex please explain. Well, if you undeck all of the guilds, um, if you undeck all of the guilds on your roster, you can deck somebody. Um, furthermore, what guilds would do is they would force a life skilling guild. So, I know because I was in major siege guilds um, and I was in PVP guilds. I've been in a lot of guilds, especially in the T1 guilds. This is their like their rat strategy. They would have someone from a different guild go grief one of the guild members at a grind spot really hard, like running it down, intentionally trying to antagonize them and dying on repeat to this person so that that life skilling guild would declare war on that other guild so that guy wouldn't lose karma. The second that deck went out, the actual PvP guild would then return uh, a deck or uh, would like would deck that life skilling guild and then leave it up for the next two months and just run them into the fucking ground. There's a lot of ways around the deck system. There were a lot of ways that people tried to manipulate the deck system and to get one sided war decks on um, on weaker guilds, and that right there kills a the guild exactly. Like it, it, it was miserable. It was it was a being abused. Let's be honest. That's not what the deck system was was supposed to be there for. Like that's it's a, it was an abuse. That's why one sided decks needed to go. Still isn't healthy to have a one sided deck system in the game for PvP. I agree. You just need to change your in game PvP system. One sided decks are not healthy. It's abuse. We've seen it. I know that people like to joke about consent and stuff, but like this is a fucking video game. If I don't want to PvP, I shouldn't be forced to. It's just that simple. From the Blade Bug Quest, we've seen it happen to fake uni with the crystal situation. It's just literally a lack of communication on PA's end. And then what happens is, is that the content creator faces the backlash for it, as if they're the villain. Oh, now we don't have war. PvP is real healthy, right? I mean, I don't think PvP was healthy before. But if you want to look at open world PvP, I would say that open world PvP is absolutely healthier than it was before. For sure. You don't have guilds dying because they're being harassed into the ground by another guild anymore. For sure. It's healthier. There's just a lot less of it. Just because there's less of it does not mean it's not healthier all around. Don't get the two ideas confused. But they're really not. It's really just PA's incompetence. It's simple, right? This should have never been allowed from day one. Now, the problem is they start banning people and then there's no communication. I will agree that they should have added something. They take away one side of decks. They should have added a new like PVP system to the game. It should have just been reworked. Open world PVP as a, as a rule should just be reworked from the ground up. Whether you're going to make it a faction system or you're going to make it like the new world PVP system or WoW's PVP system or what have you, it needs to be reworked from the ground up because forcing people into PVP is just not fun behind it but however other, there should be incentives for pvp you should incentivize people to go pvp give them drop rate buffs etc um make it high risk high reward that's what they want anyway right 
actually the communication was so bad correct monkey that monkey then when this situation happened random care bears in the community start to take advantage of this and whenever they got pk they were reporting players for getting for getting harassed now what's happening in the community is that people are getting banned simply for flagging up and going red it's happened to plenty of my Please understand that every single case that is put in is handled individually by the CMGM team, okay? It's not just like a one-size-fits-all change. When somebody gets reported, they they have to, like, look at every case individually. The only reason that they ban people is for following someone really, like, obvious harassment. If you're following someone server-to-server, server, right, that's obvious harassment. If you have a group of people helping coordinatedly follow people server-to-server, server, it's harassment, right? But like removing the black robot, I'll be honest with you, fixed a lot of this shit. My friends already. And it's not been the context of where they're shit talking or they're following. Nobody, nobody gets banned because somebody walked into the grindstone, they flagged up and they killed them eight times. Nobody does that. Nobody gets banned for that. Okay. Like, and vice versa. However, if you flag up and kill somebody eight times and they keep coming back and then you swap servers and then they follow you and then they do it again. Okay. That person got banned players so now we have an incompetence issue on pa side this is not the first time this has happened i'm of the opinion that this should have never been allowed and that pa needs to publicly address this they need to publicly address it number two players should not be getting banned for going red and simply flagging up the only case no one is where no one is getting, banned, be getting for that. banned no one is, is getting banned if you're for that. actually following someone i had members of goon that would dm me i got banned for just going red at garmoth and then somebody else would dm me like the guy's like yeah i'm the guy that reported him uh here's the full video blue and it's literally just like swidex following someone like fucking four times in a row server to server and then he nuked a bunch of people at garmoth and then he said it was because of garment like shut the fuck up across multiple channels for hours straight or you're doing it like multiple times a day like you're clearly trying to hunt someone right that's you're actually then impeding someone's gameplay that's Correct. really the only scenario what where up, it should happen now again this does not mean like if i'm killing some guy 45 times in a row on my channel right yeah no. if he doesn't channel flop that's his that's problem it. that's yes. not that's not yep. breaking tos mm -hmm. now yeah if you repeatedly hunt this guy across multiple channels yep. that should be the bannable offense the grief that is BDL the bannable shaky that's how it works but <laughs> got worse when pa took over why because you can see someone's entire family name roster and guild roster on the website when this that is true if you want to see someone's i'll show you if you want to see someone's guild or like family name right if i want to go to adventurer right uh and i can type in i'll, I'll use myself because i don't want to expose anybody but if you use blue squadron right you can see you can click on their name and then you can see what guild they're in all of their characters what their life skill levels are what their levels are everything you can literally see everything about everybody right you can make it private but there's a bot there's a bot there's a bot that goes around it says uh it's, it's called the who is bot and you can just who is and then it'll it'll query that that particular family name and it'll tell you every single guild that you've been in for the last year i'll do it does anybody want me to do it to him uh where is hold on let me find it there it is Plain chicken rice? All right, hold on. Plain chicken rice. Okay. Account was created six years ago. You have a level 62 Dark Knight. You have a level 61 Nova. You have a level six. I can see all the character names too. Your, for example, your tamer's name is Channel Shortcake with one N in channel. I can see everything. It is what it is. Like, like that. This is because it's pulling it straight from the website, right? It's pulling it straight from the website. Like, it's like it can query all this stuff. Like every guild, every single guild can do this. Yeah, I can query myself. Now you're doing a video react. I sent you something really worth it. Okay, I'll I'll look at it after Tony. This happened just directly. Docs via BDO. Well, I did ask. Blue abusing a bug. It's not a bug. 
the feature. It's just pulling this information here. This is, yeah, he offered. Yeah, it's just pulling this information off the website. It's, it's literally just making it easier for you. We buffed the black robe so hard. All it takes is 20 people. Every, everybody, every guild I've ever been in has that bot. Every single, at least the PvP guilds, even the, the life scaling guilds I were in, I was in, they all have that bot. Everybody has that bot. It's the who is bot. Separate across every channel and then just black robe everyone in the guild roster. The black robe bot is different um, and, and in many cases fake. Um, so like, I don't really want to talk too much on it, but like what people used to pretend to do is they used to pretend that they could hunt you server to server with a black robe bot. What they really had was a spy in your guild telling you what channel you keep going to. Their whole family roster. Oh, boom, you're hunting. Waki Toshi? A lot of people were assuming Waki Toshi bot I thought was a gear bot. What my take was on the GBG chain. Being able to see an entire guild roster is nonsense. I agree. Yeah. And if you can't find them on the website doing this, if you can't find somebody on the website doing this, you're like, oh, their, their account's private? No problem. If you want to see what guild somebody's in, you can literally just go to, uh, where is this at? Community, overview, adventure, guild. You click guild, you paste the guild name into the, uh, into the bar, you hit enter. There's the guild right there. And then you can see every single fucking member of the guild. And then you can query, uh, let's see, is blue in this guild? There I am right there. Right? So even if I have my account privated, you can still see what guild I'm in. It doesn't matter. And that's, again, that's all public information. Like, it's, it, that, that's, it's on their website. It's the official website, bro. Like, change, right? I'm a PvPer. You guys know that. All I do is open world PvP. I don't care about grinding personally. Most people play MMORP. It doesn't matter as much anymore because the black robe is gone. It does not matter as much anymore because the black robe is gone. But like, yeah, it's pretty rough. PGs to PvE and grind so generally speaking when you force pvp like in the way gvgs were uh it's a it leaves a very salty taste in people's mouth people don't like forced pvp here's the problem like almost every mmo has the same info available it's a bad argument because the other mmos don't have forced pvp like bdo does in most cases because we have the open world PvP system that we do, having that kind of information available is dangerous. Having it available in WoW doesn't matter because in WoW you have to consent to PvP no matter what. It doesn't matter. People can't just like kill you. Like I said, uh, the problem was is that the only content that BDO offered was the open world griefing PvP GVG mechanic. Now they removed their only content out of the game and now there's nothing left. So now we can very right, tragic, much see why there needs to be a actual MMORPG inside of BDO. The sandbox of the game is entirely empty and the MMO aspects are missing. So now that GVG has gone, there's truly... Remember guys... That's what MMO stands for. When do you get this feeling when you're playing Black Desert Online? That's the point he's trying to make. When do you get the feeling that you're playing with a lot of other people? That's that's the point he's making. Really nothing left. So now PA, you're out of dilemma. Node Wars you're and Siege. Exactly. But there should be more, right? There should be more than just the PvP, right? Especially in an MMO, most people would like to do cooperative. Yeah. Lama, okay. Like, needs I, I would rather play cooperatively with people than play against them. For example, I'd rather have I, I would rather have Garnier on my team than have to PvP against him. Right? I'd rather have Ellie on my team than have to PvP against her. I'd rather play against the bot, right? I'd rather play against the AI, right? Like I it is what it is. Shut up, Garnier. I will just I would just mute you and force you to buff me the whole time. It needs to be PvP content that I can do whenever I want in the open world, okay? Now, me, I was playing Throne in Liberty for a little while. Oh, yeah, he's missing Vel's heart. Look at that. The way Throne in Liberty did it, I'm just not I'm not saying BDO should do this. I'm just giving an idea to throw out there. Is that they have these dynamic events. So uh, that, that could be a world boss or just something randomly spawning in the world. Now, imagine, guys, if Garmoth, right? Imagine if Garmoth spawned like five or six times a day. 
uh, three of those Garmoths would be PvP. No. And three of those no. Garmoths would be... You Forgive him, Lord. He knows not what he asks. We used to have PvP at world bosses. Fuck that shit. There is not a chance. No, no, no. Like, no, get get out of here with that idea. I don't like it. There were so many better ups. Again, ideally, we have a faction system where, like, events spawn in the open world that can be PvP-oriented. But you can't... Here's one perfect argument for if you had six Garmas in a, get, in a day, three were PvP, three were PvE. Well, what if my schedule, I can only make the PvP ones? You know what I mean? That's, that's going to be the argument. It just won't work. Like, they're just going to remove it. It just won't work. But if they did a faction system with open world field events, which doesn't have, like, necessary in-game gear attached to it, okay. With, like, cosmetic stuff, if you do... Oh, my God. Here's, here's an idea, boys. You ally to the Calpheon faction. You do enough stuff for your Calpheon faction, they give you a special, high-quality in-game outfit that shows... That you are a faction leader, or that you're like you're like one of the one of the people that contributes most to the faction. That would be sick. It's totally cosmetic, doesn't give you anything extra. That would be fucking sick. School uniform, please, mommy. PVE. And for the PvP Garma. Please no factions, then we get the same Arc Age bullshit and daily reset system. Well, it doesn't have to be. Right? I like. It doesn't have to be necessarily affection, but like open world PVP events that just spawn and then you can go fight for them with your guild. And then if your guild gets like wins it, then it doesn't even have to be faction. You can make it guild based. If your guild goes and PVPs at that at that particular thing, everybody that went gets 300 mil and then your entire guild gets a 20% grind drop buff for the next hour. Done. Don't even need factions. Just make open world PVP events that spawn and whatever guild shows up and, and wins that PvP event or holds the point the longest or whatever, gets a drop buff for their guild, and there's your open world PvP. Easy dub. Easy dub. The rewards would be ramped up, and the guild that did the highest damage would get... I'm a bit of a lurker here, Blue, and I mostly play single-player games. And I just want to say that I really wish there was more interaction with other players in the world because it doesn't feel like you get anything by interacting with others. Radical measure, I completely agree with you. That's exactly what Shaky's trying to say here the reward he just said it a little a little funky with the garmoth thing could we just like think of how awesome that would be for bdo what do you what's your idea for cooperative grind random grinding players grinding together lekrishan i mean uh, not lekrishan um uh, mirawax labyrinth uh, random players don't even have to party up you're all technically grinding together easy dub instead bdo does this communism approach no pvp no pve another really cool thing i saw other games do there's this one game that had an open world dungeon and at night time the doors to the dungeon would close and then what they could do is the drop rates could go up and then it'd be open pvp and then whoever has it has it right or bdo could have a peace and wartime system for different areas maybe stars and could be peacetime and then for a certain period, it'd be PvP for three hours straight, and then the rewards would be jacked up. Yeah, it was Throne and Liberty, that's what he's talking about. I'm pretty sure that system is in Throne and Liberty. Right? That's what I'm getting at. So, P is at a dilemma. Either way, it's either, for now, they re-enable GVGs, and then when they can finally enable, right? When they can finally enable um other pvp content existing for players to go do then gbgs being turned off wouldn't matter but right now there's no content so it matters a lot i don't no, no no there is gbg content for guilds that actually want to fight each other but you can't fucking bully people anymore that just shows you how much of the pvp system was like unconsensual pvp people just forcing people into stuff it's crazy um Currently watching your stream of Kakao used to have a bounty hunters guild that was red players who stopped griefing guilds and players. Um, we had a website you could submit tickets to and we looked at and be looked at by our guild leader who worked for Kakao then and would be sent and they would they would send tickets to us. And then he sent me this screenshot here. I'll take a look at this. Uh, submitted a new contracts three form. A guild named Graphic is decked on my guild for absolutely nothing and has 
Uh, also gotten two other guilds to deck on me. We're a very small guild with beginners and people who casually play. The person who we believe it is is a uh, DK and an officer in graphic who's allied with the other guilds, NSFW and Harvest Fields. Most other guilds we don't have to interact with it since completely on a different server or being bullied in deck for nothing. Interesting. Interesting. Like, I mean, they tried to do some sort of um, sheriff system. The problem is... Every time you introduce something to a game, it's can we exploit it and how from the player base every single time. So like the sheriff system was like you could hire somebody that was griefing you um, or that was bullying you to go kill. That, I mean, you could hire someone to go kill somebody that was bullying you, right? And the problem is all that's going to happen is you're going to have people trading, right? Somebody starts killing you a bunch of times. You put up a bounty and then his friend takes the bounty, comes and kills him and then lets him continue to kill you, right? Like it's, it's too easily exploitable. I don't know the answer for them to fix the G what happened to the town in the desert you could go right inside that's moy quinn they used to make more content um well they i used to be a red player i used to do be in moy quinn it was a lot of fun um they said that ulukita was going to be like that and then they scrapped the idea it was very strange i thought that was kind of cool i thought it was very cool G system either way though forcing pvp i liked that the desert was like this lawless place where you could send people to jail instead of losing crystals and stuff i think that there should be more stuff like that i think that's really cool he is cringe sending people to waste their time because they try to bully you is fun but this is this is pa's job it's not my job it's not your guys's job it's pa's job they now need to actually put open world pvp content into the game um the way she the way they should should have done deck system information is you can do one sided deck and it stays up for 12 ish hours and it auto drops when you got a cooldown until you can deck the other guild and then you can deck another guild again guilds that are decked on each other stay up perma until one takes it down well then you're just saying no quancy that doesn't work because then you're saying that bullying is okay as long as it's for 12 hours or less like, no, the, the solution here, no, abuse is not okay. You can stop trying to abuse the system. Stop trying to get around it. Stop trying to abuse players. Stop that. We're done with that. We're past it. But for the most part, people voted against the GBG deck change. So No, I no, no. The PvP scene voted against it, but it was a very controversial post. Um, I think that most players actually like the one-sided deck changes. Most of the vocal players did not like it. At least for the time being... I think they should re-enable it until they can actually add some content. I feel like being abused. That's because you haven't had sex in 11 years. And then they communicate. That's really what should happen. And that's why PvP is in the sorry state it's in. And I also want to expand upon what I'm, up, upon my points here. So for the most part, right? Like the main competitive content in the game, which is Node War and Sieges, it's locked behind having to have an alliance, which makes it really not welcoming for newer guilds or newer players to get into the game. Because once they get enough people, and then the minute they realize that if they're not like in the scene, they're just going to get zerked against immediately. And okay. Maybe the hottest take of the year. But the alliance system needs to be rolled back. No more 150 man alliances. You want more guilds fighting on nodes? You want more interactable nodes? Smaller guild sizes. The only way you get smaller guild sizes is to roll the alliance changes back. To 100 man guilds. And then you crank the, the amount required for each node. You crank that way down. So that only like 40 or 50 mans, 60 maybe at the most, but like maybe you have one or 200 man nodes if people want to really go hard. But like for the most part, nodes are like smaller man caps, but then you're going to have more guilds fighting uh, and more perspectives. And I think it would be a lot more fun that way. That might be the hottest take of the fucking year, but like I think that they should roll the alliance the um, changes back. I think alliances should only go to 100 man. That becomes unfun. PA needs to actually add. When did they go to 150? Ellie, where have you been? <laughs> They've been 150 for like three and a half years. Since the uh, they, they changed Node Wars a while back to be like that risk system, they made alliances 150 men so that people could like pull a bunch of people to war every day. They need to, and then they removed that system, but they didn't remove the alliance changes. I think they need to roll that back. I think you would get more guilds doing PvP, and I think it would be more fun for the whole scene. Some continents competitive. I think that there would be some difficult conversations. I'll be honest with you. It might be the content of my life covering that shit.
and Trebex has just been removed from Snake. B kill makes a big cut. You know what I mean? Like I would literally, I, I, I would go hard on that because like there's so many people, it would get so competitive to try to get into an end game guild at that point, dude. <laughs> that would be crazy. I don't know if that was also just good for like smaller guilds to get into. Oh my so, God, like, he's got two ominous. They got to consider adding in some 10v10 content. And I'm not talking about the GVG bs for adding in so i'm gonna talk about here in a minute we need some actual like 10v10 content 20v20s and then also do like the four people used to ally node and siege even before the alliance system it won't change much yeah but there'll be more guilds in the team fight right so instead of being a 2v2 with like 50v or like with like on a 50 man node it would be like a 4v4 right there would be more guilds participating 40v40 that you know the 80v80 it wouldn't change anything at all i disagree in Node Wars and Siege, it would have, you would have much more guilds participating. Whatever they want to do. With Same it. amount of people cut into more guilds. I don't think the game can support Siege. It's just too laggy, too desynky. So. I think it can support Siege as long as you don't have the castle aspect of Siege. If you just have like the walls and the open field fighting and like the really big stuff like that, Yes, it can support Siege. But when you stack all of the players on top of each other in the castle for Sieging the Castle, no, it can't do it. It just can't do it. Console Siege feels great, by the way. That's because there's only four players. Uh, is War of the Roses coming soon? Uh, it's still technically in KR, but um, it it's in the game, but we don't know. I think what they should consider is that whatever that War of the Roses content was going to be, maybe that yeah i mean like if they just removed the castles from siege and then they super buffed people like remove the castles and then let's say cho owns the castle right instead of being in the castle cho nation would get reinforced walls catapults and like you know extra defense structures their base could be bigger you know like they have more health like their base could just be buffed up right then like you're not just trying to zerg cho off or you're not just trying to zerg the castle owner off and everyone you still get that like defense like ability, right? It's just, you get to be involved in the fight and like less, there's less lag. That could be like the uncapped kind of content, but I really think that for Node Wars and Siege, and they the need to consider right. how many guilds they can allow to be on one node or castle siege before it starts lagging. As many can and fit. And that needs to be a limit. The game just can't support it. Number two, we need separate servers for Node Wars and Siege. True. Or an instance. I know PA is after money. Some of y'all are gonna hate me or you're gonna love me for this. So I honestly don't care. I love to speak in my mind. I just don't care, okay? So look, for a lot of free-to-play players, the Pearl Shop's a bitch. You know, a lot of us have the desire to play new classes. Unfortunately, re-rolling, it costs as much as a new graphics card now, just to re-roll. <laughs> that is not true. That is not true at all. Graphics cards, depending on which ones you buy, you're talking seven, eight hundred bucks. Rerolling, dude, all you gotta do is tag, man. The fuck do you mean you gotta pay for a graphics card shaky? There's a tag system right here. Shaky, oh my God, how many thousands of dollars? Shaky, there's a thing in the game that allows you to tag, man. Inventory and weight, you don't need inventory and weight. Bro, you're on some cope, you don't need that. Get the hell out of here, bro. Oh God, you don't know you don't need none of that. Plus, they give away a lot of free inventory space, a lot of free inventory space. Like you, you definitely don't need inventory. You definitely don't need weight. You could buy like the loyalty weight off the market. I haven't bought inventory and weight in a really long time on my main, even though I've rerolled a number of times. Like my lawn doesn't even have a horse flute. Don't care. I don't care. Um. I've been asking for so long to make a server where only participating guilds can enter one hour before Node War. No non-participating guild can enter. It is such a pain seeing fishers and horse trainers taking up the server data and adding lag. Well, no, what the life skillers are doing because they're really smart is I used to do this too when I was in a life skilling guild and I knew how to make spirit perfume elixir and no one else did. I would wait until Node War started, intentionally swap to a Node War server because all the mobs despawn and then I would go, um, I would go grind out loopy trees at. Because normally when you're grinding loopy tree sap, the most annoying thing is the fetuses bother you, but all the mobs despawn during node wars. 
like on god like I, I i would do that but like they they need to just yeah if they made it instance that you wouldn't have people doing that anymore you're part of the problem i was part of the problem oh, gotta buy weight inventory slots all that number one i think pn needs to make the tagging system up to four to five characters uh listen alts don't really mean anything in media four to five Shaky, is this that bargaining strategy where you just you you throw out a figure that is way over the top and then you're just hoping that they're gonna meet you somewhere in the middle? Is that what you're doing right now? I, I yeah, classic negotiation tactic. Yeah, that that, that there's <laughs> there is no shot. <laughs> we need more tag slots. Maybe one more tag slot. I don't mind one more tag slot. That that would be fine. I don't think that that would be a problem. I think one more tag slot would be totally fine. You know what I mean? Four or five more tag slots is obnoxious. Yo, but people would like to play more than one class. That'll just help keep things a lot less dry. People like to play multiple classes in any game they play. Rerolling should never be this thing where it's so punishing like how BDO is. I think that loot scrolls need to be taken out of the game. They're just out there. I don't feel that... What the fuck was that take? Holy shit. We'll get to that in a second. Um, I don't, I don't really feel like rerolling is very expensive anymore. I feel like it's at a minimal cost. I don't feel like I don't spend any money on it. I want to tag a new character. I just play the new character. I don't need inventory. I don't need weight. So he just said that loot scrolls need to be removed. They don't make sense anymore. Give everyone level two loot scroll buff permanently in the game as a whole. Make that the norm. And what should happen is, is instead of selling the loot scrolls, start selling the old moon scrolls on the, on the, on the pearl shop instead. And just No. No. Disagree. <clears throat> I think that currently, I, I think that makes the game, I, I feel like that doesn't really fix a problem. It just makes the old moons, it just, you create a new problem for yourself. Now everyone has 100% more drop rate all the time. Um, and now, now you feel like you need these old moon scrolls. Like, then, then you feel like you need the old moon scrolls to be efficient grinding. Right now, you only get old moon scrolls typically from, like, events and stuff. Like, I think that trying to remove... I think that I would agree with the idea of simplifying grinding. I think the amount of steps that you need to do as a grinder... Let's go through them. Let's go through them, right? Um, pets fed. Pets out. Alchemy stone. Church buff. Villa buff. Fairy setup, drought, perfume. Um, let's go up to the next row. Elixir. Um, God, what else is there? Um, oh, loot scroll. Uh, drop rate buffs. Um, the cron meal. The horse buff. Um, crystals. Skill preset. Uh, invest in the node. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Artifacts. Lightstones. Um. Oh, yeah. The correct gear, which you believe it or not, is like a problem. You know what I mean? I'm wearing my Kaya. I've been grinding Dark Seekers with a Kaya necklace on. You know what I mean? Agris. That's a good one. Um. Uh, Ted Buffs. We've got that. A friend in a Discord call with you. Yeah, suicide hotline support, you know? Um, oh yeah, check, open, rotation. Um, inventory, check. Uh, event items. Second monitor stream. Blue squadron stream. Now we're grasping? No, this is like a thing. This is like a thing. Alchemy Stone, we've already got that. Hey, Matt, how many of you have started grinding and you're missing some fundamental part of your grinding setup? You you finally get everything done. I forgot to feed my pets. 
My alchemy stone hasn't been on for 20 minutes. I popped my my tent buff and then forgot to turn on my loot scroll. I forgot to like like oh shit, I had a but uh, my inventory or I mean like I'm overweight already. Like uh, my aggress isn't on. Oh my aggress is on and I just wasted it in Gypen in 4 minutes, you know? Like oh my god, dude. Like I don't like like I don't mind removing loot scrolls from the game if you're going to condense all of this. This all needs to be condensed super hard. All of it needs to be condensed crazy hard. Like this is an obnoxious amount of shit to have to do because you have to do PVE grinding in BDO. It's insane. Grab a quest? No, 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 no. You should be able to condense it all into like one item that you prepared way ahead of time. And then you have like a hundred of those items. And then all you have to do is click this button or toggle this preset on and all of that shit just comes on and you're done. And that's it. Like. Oh, they're making loadouts soon in 2024? Ah, uh, we'll see. Maybe not to condense all of that, though. Grind ready button, exactly. Yeah. Call it a day. That'll be a really nice change. I, I don't, I, but I disagree with the, the, the idea of, it's an interesting idea to remove loot scrolls from the game and then just give everybody gold loot scrolls and then add like the j scrolls or whatever like to the or like the supreme old moon scrolls to the to the pearl shop i just i don't see how it solves anything it basically you take everyone's silver per hour and you increase it by 1.2 times i think it's just like and, and we're already making like it just buffs pve again and it puts everything else that you said in your video pvp life skilling um like bartering every other way to make money in the entire game is now even worse than it was before because you've given everyone free loot scrolls. Like, it, it, stop buffing PvE. <laughs> we want the PvP. We want more money in PvP. Sounds like another pay-to-win fairy system. So it might happen. Stop. Stop. I think a lot of players would like. Really consider the 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 comma blessing old moon book and value pack. Just merge it into one. No, nobody wants. That is true. This, this ridiculous system where we have a value pack, a comma blessing, and a book of old moon is getting ridiculous. The Mervs palette, the die system in the game, needs to be completely reworked like from the ground up. Um, but like, yeah, I, I agree. This should all be rolled into one. I to pay three of these. Like, it's just overly complicated for a new player. Simplify shit, man. Descriptions, okay. There's Plus, no they would probably make more money. I'm being honest. I bet more of you would actually spend money on this shit if it was all one. Instead of a value pack that was $15 a month, you have a value pack, comma, blessing, and book of old moon that's $20 a month. I bet more people would buy it. You know what I mean? I think that most of the time right now, people are just getting the comma, blessing, and the book of moon, old moon off the market. I think that people would be okay with $20, just increase the price a little bit, slap them together, done. I think people would be happy with that. Fairy system needs a rework too. Uh, allow us to have a second fairy on the side stop instead of having our current fairy make another stop trying to have a harem of fairies Quancy, i know what you're doing you duck freak all you're trying to do is buy a second cabelius outfit for your fairy you want the cabelius outfit and you want the maid outfit so you can have both outfits at the same time so you can look over and be like damn she's hot and then damn she's hot damn my character's hot too i play maywa because i'm a coomer you know what i mean like everywhere i look it's just super hot women shut up wants to do it look with how the game is set up pay to win it just doesn't matter like it just doesn't you can whale a thousand dollars and get literally nothing on this game literally nothing and at this point we all ask cannon um i, I will say that maywa has the biggest boob slider in the game okay that's why fancy plays maywa know that the game is grind to win what was the like it just doesn't you can Look, with how the game is set up, pay to win, it just doesn't matter. Like, it just doesn't. You can whale a thousand dollars and get literally nothing on this game. Literally. Pay to win does matter. What's going on here? We're going over Shaky's uh, recent video drop. It dropped a few hours ago. Pay to win does matter. But here's the metric. Okay. There's a certain line of pay to win. And this line is directly correlated with how much work you have to put in to how much money that you could put into the game to get that much work done. In this case, 
it would be about 40 US dollars an hour. Okay. 40 US dollars an hour. Or so you can either grind or spend $40. I think that most people are just going to go grind. Right? Right? But if if you get over this number, so if it, if it's uh, maybe I have these two slips. Maybe I have to I have to switch these two. I have to switch these two. Acceptable data win. Unacceptable data win. Okay. If you go under $40 an hour, so you're spending $20 and you get an hour's worth of work in the game. Okay, well, now we've kind of crossed the line now. More players are going to pay to win. Players are going to find that less acceptable. I think that if you go over this, it's like, okay, it's $100 or so you can grind for an hour. Oh, okay, well, then that's fine, right? But like, I think that this is kind of the line that BDO is kind of drawn is like for their pay to win line. And I think that people are okay with this, but it does matter. It absolutely matters. It just doesn't matter that much as long as they don't cross this line. Imagine my friend bought costumes just for enhancing a pen demo. How much did he spend? I'd rather not ask. Oh yeah, dude, I'm thousands of dollars. Doing nothing. One hour equals one costume. Um, not so much. It kind of depends on, you know, if you get them on sale, coupons, whatnot, you know, cause like somebody that's buying 35 outfits a week is not gonna probably be able to buy them all on sale. Kind of depends. And at this point, we all know that the game is grind to win. We all know that. I personally don't think it would hurt. I think it would only be a benefit if we had pearls to silver and silver to pearls. That would solve a lot of problems for a lot of players in the game, number one. Number two, PA, you would simply just make more money, I believe. Um, now, that's my take. Let's back up for a minute. So you want... You want to be able to exchange in-game silver directly for pearls. Just without limit. Just without limit. There is no shot. You can? No, there's, there's limits and stuff. The way that the system they have it now, you can't do that. There is no shot. Shaky. Shaky, your video, there goes all your downvotes, bro. That's where you're going to get your down. There's that like, there is a limit on how much pay to win you can do per, per week now, unless you're doing cron stones and then it's just all RNG. So yeah, you're just kind of shitting your money away for no reason. Um, he basically wants to play Lost Ark. <laughs> Not necessarily true, but Lost Ark does have a lot of problems with botting. Um, also RMT would be a serious issue too. Um, if you could do this, you could definitely, uh, there, there, there would be RMT websites that would pop up immediately. Not that like, that's not always going to be a problem anyway, but like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I think that's a hot take. I disagree. Um, I think being able to exchange silver for pearls is fundamentally a very bad idea. Um, pay to win matters. The line for pay to win in a game matters, especially in the West. For Koreans, they don't mind as much about pay to win. All right, how pay to win things are like they do care a little bit, but not a crazy amount in the West. We really do care, but like there's a certain amount of pay to win that a consumer is willing to take in. For example, if I could spend $10 and get an hour's worth of work, this game is dead. The game is dead. Like, cause like, why would I, why would I go grind? I could just spend a hundred dollars. Boom. There's 10 hours of grinding. Done. Like it just, it just won't work. And doing that infinitely is ridiculous pay for convenience pay for convenience is pay to win don't fool yourself like it's making your time more valuable and which is essentially i don't want to get into it too much but like making your time more valuable essentially is pay to win but like again pay to convenience is accepted because like there's a line that people are willing to accept and pay to convenience is on the correct side of that line nobody cares nobody gives a shit it could also mean being able to list pearls on the market instead of a specific pearl item it would allow people to choose what they want from the pearl shop versus getting it listed. Um, yeah, but then exclusive pearl shop items would lose their value. Like per Pearl Abyss would lose money on that. And they're not going to do something that's going to lose their bottom line. Y'all give your feedback. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I did. And uh, 
please comment down below like share the video talk with other people get the conversation going this feedback needs to get pa to change the game shaky you could have put that last point in the video anywhere you sadistic fuck you realize that the thing that people are most likely to comment on is the last thing that they hear and you put the hottest take of your video at the very end of the fucking video because you literally get off to people cussing you out on the internet it's crazy it's literally insane you're you're fucking crazy dude like the rest of the video you were cooking um here's the video right here guys go interact with the video it's already got it's got zero down votes be the first one today i'm just kidding <laughs> good video some hot takes but a good video refresh what in the never mind <laughs> it's toast shaky but i did my part i'm doing my part 